Hello and welcome to the Mental Music Podcast, a podcast made for teens by teens, exploring mental health from our perspective. My name's Gordon. And I'm Grace. Today we'll be discussing school stress. Remember that we are just two 15-year-olds sitting behind a mic, and any advice that we give should not be considered professional medical advice. And if you're experiencing any mental health issues of your own, please contact a professional or talk to somebody that you trust. We'll, today we'll be interviewing uh, a student at the Brisbane State High School called Michaela. And we'll be listening to music by Isabella Gonzalez, I Will Stay, and It's Okay, and Egg Free. Now for our first song by Isabella Gonzalez, it's called I Will Stay. Keep me strong. Have waited for this day too long. No. To say I love you, but don't get me wrong. And it took a million years. Like it's like in your suit and tie. Maybe every time you let me. Say I promise I will stay, stay, stay. Tell me from today, I promise I will stay, stay, stay. I promise. Now nothing even matters. Just hang my head. Say I promise how we stay, stay, stay. Tell from today, I promise how we stay, stay, stay. I promise. Before I met you, I was lost and clueless in this world. Didn't have any idea or know how love felt. This is real. This is strong. We're connected. Got a bond. Laughing at Mr. Mitchum. I'm like, damn, what's he on? Hey, your love is my drug. When you speak, I go high. High above in the clouds. You see, Superman, let's fly. I know it's pretty obvious. Baby, I can lie. Yet it's easy to say. It's been you all this time. All this time. And they all know that I'm. Yeah, I'm falling Say I promise I will stay. Today we'll be discussing school stress and how um, you can easily become overwhelmed and anxious um, about school and all the things involved with that. Right, so uh, to start off, um, a bit of a history lesson, a natural history lesson. I know it's ironic, 
Uh, we're educating you on why stress is bad because of education. Uh, but yeah, to start off, uh, humans uh, way back, way back in the uh, cave, uh, caveman times, and they did, way sorry, back in the cave. sorry, <laughs> way back in the cave. Yeah, no, um, yeah, we uh, humans started off, um, and they, oh geez, I lost it. No, uh, sorry, they humans are naturally lazy. If they see something that they have to do that they don't want to do mm -hmm. because it requires effort or a lot of thinking, they they'll put it off. That's known as procrastination, and pretty much everyone. Uh, procrastinates. Yeah, and if you know anyone says and who says that they don't procrastinate, well, I bid you to go to their face and call them a liar. Yeah, yeah, that's the, everyone procrastinates. That's that's a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, if if there's something that you have to do, like your teacher asks you to uh, to put out this report in a week, and you inevitably will procrastinate a bit for the first few days. Like, oh, like I've still got five days to go, and then mm -hmm. a few days later, three days. It's enough time. Uh, but yeah, eventually it catches up, and that's when you get stressed. And yeah, yeah so it's it's the uh, it's knowing that you have to do something that you really, really don't want to do, and especially when there's a deadline. So if you know you have to do something by this time, uh, this amount of stuff by this time, you know uh, that you'll be under pressure to do that. Otherwise, mm. the consequences will be pretty bad. And then it starts to get pretty bad when you have lots of things that are due yeah. at lots of times, and so. Eventually, you're putting off all these things, and it's getting close, and then yeah. all of a sudden... That's pretty much what school is. You've got, yeah. what, six, eight, ten subjects at any one time, and most of which come in crunch time uh, at the end of term or at the end of semester, you'll have exams for, and uh, reports, due and assignments and, yeah. due. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it easily piles up, and it gets quite stressful for the student. And that's what we're going to be talking about today uh, with school stress and how the student is affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so once you're particularly stressed you can you get this feeling um which we call overwhelm yes yeah. and um it's very common and honestly it, it's, it feels pretty horrible like we've all been there yeah like, it, it kind of knocks you off the rails like whoa what's going on and it, yeah you have to it takes a bit of time to to uh, get a grip to realize that it can mm. change we're going to be um talking today to with Michaela and she's going to be talking about how she deals with um when how she deals with it when she gets overwhelmed and stuff like that. But something also that we need to lead on to is how um, anxiety ties in with all of this school stress and how you can just, it just kind of gets bottled up. And yeah, it just yeah, and leads, eventually yeah. it just starts, it, the bottle pops and it, it becomes very, very difficult to cope. Yeah. And it's just hard dealing with it, but yeah, you got it. It's you have to battle through. I mean, it's 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 school. It's a part of life, and what well, come year twelve, or come university, and the end of all that, uh, it's it's over. So that's that's all good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll move on to um, also how you can be influenced and pressured at school um, by perhaps your parents, uh, teachers, other students. Peer pressure is always mm -hmm. a thing in school. And yeah. Um, so with, we'll start off with parents. So with parents, it's um, quite easy to be pressured by them, so perhaps... Um, yeah, so if, if you have a history of getting good marks or, mm. or sometimes particularly bad marks and your parents are like, hey, try harder, you can get better marks, and say you're a student with good marks and you don't get those marks, they will question it. And that, that's a lot of pressure that you have to uh, go under. Yeah, also um, your parents, how they, have, they may have different values to you, um, so perhaps they want you to become a doctor and so you need to be taking like math C, math B... And you need to be taking biology, physics, chemistry, biology, um, and all that. And need to get an OP1. Well, yeah. in Queensland, OP1. A good, a good grade, yeah. yeah. HSC, very high. I think it's 96, 95. Yeah, something like that. Something yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, but if you feel like um, a lot of people are under pressure to um, succeed, um, to go really well in that kind of area. It, it, do, it doesn't really... Uh, help when it yeah. comes to the, the mental health so it does put a lot of pressure on them and they can suffer from that yeah and it feels like you're putting being put into a box and you have to succeed in this one particular area which you don't really want to succeed in yeah and uh, so yeah it's it's especially amplified if your parents are putting pressure on you to do something that also puts pressure on you that you don't want to do so say you want to, uh, your parents want you to become a doctor or a surgeon but you really want to be a geologist you want to work in uh, you want to work in the desert looking for oil stuff like that that's my brother. He was he had this phase of wanting to be um, a rock analyst, a geologist. That sounds like fun. Yeah, so that that was him. I haven't actually talked to him about. I haven't actually talked to him about that in a while. So I need to touch base with him. 
but yeah, no, he he has uh, he has that view, and his parents he might have uh, they might have different views. So they want him to do different things, and in doing that, they pressure him into taking different subjects and working harder than mm. he would originally have to, uh, especially want to. Yeah, and I know at our school we have these things called set plan interviews. Oh yes. And they basically with you, you go with you and your parents and yourself, or perhaps one parent. Yeah. And then they so you choose your subjects and you go. This is what like we want to be going into, and then they look at your marks and what your subjects and, yeah, and they say, yeah, that of, makes sense. Yeah, that uh, makes sense. This won't work out. Yeah. yeah, or perhaps just say you're in a lot of like orchestras at school, but your parents are saying, oh, you should do math C, you should do um, physics and chemistry. Yeah, but, but you want to join a chamber orchestra when you grow up. Yeah, yeah. or so your, your extra or your curricular actual... activities kind of like hint towards what you want to do. Yeah, or perhaps your grades in like perhaps math B or like a C or a B level. Yeah, and not so good. Yeah, and so they'll they'll actually just go, we don't think you're suited towards this um, and we just want to, like, they'll kind of guess what's up and so they lead you off that pressure of um, where yeah. your parents want you to, want to put you because something um, to remember is that you are you and... And no one can change who you are. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're the only person that has the power to, to do what you want. Mm. Um, also to mention um, how your school can influence how like how well you want to succeed like at our school as well it's a very high academic achieving school yeah so yeah that. That, that's always um, very pressuring to say oh your teachers and, and the, the headmaster come along and say hey we got these great results uh, last year and it's your job now to maintain those results so that puts a lot of pressure on you mm. yeah and um, just before we move on to what type of learning um, I'd like to mention how your peers can influence you. Yeah, peer pressure is a big thing in school because we all have friends, uh, as we touched on in episode one, mm-hmm. uh, we all have friends that uh, we spend time with and we work with and they, they all have to do Perhaps similar subjects up to, to you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you get role models and if a student is in a completely, area, a completely different area in school, so say they're doing engineering, physics and math C, whereas you're in the, in the other side doing biology and uh, philosophy... Uh, it, it can be it can put a lot of pressure on you because mm. if especially if they're a good friend of yours it can change uh, what you end up doing so say they're doing uh, chemistry uh, say they're doing physics and engineering uh, but you didn't really see that you were going to do that in your future life mm-hmm. you might change uh, your your thoughts on the subjects based on what they think yeah and that can affect you quite a lot. Yeah, just got to remember to stay true to yourself. And if you feel like your friends are leading you in a bad way, like I knew of this girl um, once who her friends weren't succeeding at all and um, she wanted to succeed, like she wanted to be a doctor and all that. And so she just ended up um, leaving that group of friends to join a new group of friends, and yeah. which ended up a lot better for her. Um, again, looking at that Choosing Happiness episode yeah. um, that we talked about before. Yeah. You're always going to make the choices that are best for yourself. I know it, sound, mm-hmm. it might sound a bit selfish, but that is always the best course of action. Be selfish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's our advice for today. <laughs> um, and just before we move on to the interview, um, yeah. we'd like to bring up um, just one thing about what um, learning types. Um, so you may have seen this in school or you may have seen this somewhere, but there's several types of learning and I've got a few listed down here. So there's linguistic, so perhaps... Uh, you learn through words, yeah. so uh, by reading, by people talking to you, that's the best way for you to learn. So if you have a very vocal teacher... Writing, writing it down, yeah. That's true, yeah. If you have a very vocal teacher or a teacher that uh, enjoys giving uh, more more vocal, verbal-oriented work, then you learn the most from that. Or versus sheet someone, work, you may work better with sheet work, perhaps, because yeah. you can see it written versus down. Versus someone who would uh, be more reserved in class and say, hey, draw on this map uh, what's going on. Mm. And then we go on to um, like a musical rhythmic or also known as auditory learning where you learn a lot better when it's spoken. So less like the linguistic where it's more writing down, but more like where it's spoken and um, and how like perhaps you're you're trying to learn something. Yeah. Yeah. So perhaps if I'm trying to learn a phone number and you just got to say the phone number out and repeat it by saying it out. So that's how you learn things. Yeah. There's also a fun thing with uh, musical and rhythmic intelligence uh, and learning through that. Uh, that's qu- rather special, learning by association. So if, say uh, you wake up in the morning with the same alarm clock and you really don't like waking up in the morning. When you hear that alarm clock over and over, ruining your sleep, you kind of get to hate that noise. Mm-hmm. It's similar when it comes to learning. So if you hear that a certain song or a certain instrument, it might trigger something in your mind to, to think 
certain way, like, oh, I must be doing this at this point. At this point. Yeah, you can actually control people's minds by that. So yeah, they've fun been doing piece some of in- Yeah, fun piece of information there. Yeah. Uh, moving on to spatial intelligence, um, where you where it's more like um, visual it's, visual learners. So they yeah. look through observing things. So perhaps looking at, so at graphs and perhaps yeah, they're paintings. more hands on. Yeah. Yeah. And then logical mathematical. Um, yeah, so pretty much lo- uh, logical uh, learners, these are the people that learn through numbers, solving problems. Yeah. They, they work best through thinking. Yeah, so, you'll find these guys succeeding in the math class, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then we move on to naturalistic intelligence. Um, so perhaps people who, when they go walking through nature or they're working in nature, they feel like just a bit more connected or perhaps yeah, yeah. they're in their home environment and they start working really well. So just say... And they get more relaxed. They work better uh, being in touch with nature. Or not even um, nature, but perhaps the environment. So in yeah. touch of their environment. Yeah, of so just say, like in the room that we're sitting now, um, perhaps I may feel connected to this, and so I may work better in this room. But I can't stand these ferns, so I'm not really <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> not in the best, the, vibe. the best position. Yeah. Um, and then there's also one thing before we go into the interview is intrapersonal and interpersonal Inter- intelligence. Yeah. So. Um, uh, intrapersonal means that you learn through looking into yourself. So if you look at yourself and say, hey, I'm this person, I'm learning, you mm-hmm. can sort of, it's like, it's like a circle. You so encourage probably, yourself to work harder and yeah. doing that, you work harder. So if you're an intrapersonal learner, you probably work better um, just working by yourself. Yeah, most, uh, uh, what's it? Introverted, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> quite lo- um, yeah. yeah introverted people, introvert. they introverted. tend to be intrapersonal learners. Yeah, and then we have interpersonal, which as you can guess is through... Um, engaging with other people yeah. and just basically it's extroverted. It's like uh, the human pyramid. So you get you see other people working and you're able to get them to motivate yeah. you to work. A lot more inspiration. It's, on that that's part. Uh, it's like a positive view on peer pressure. Mm-hmm. So when you see them working, you say, "Hey, uh, let's work too." Yeah, and so now just before um, we go into the interview, um, we'd like to listen to a song by Egg called "Free."
Hi, we're here with Michaela, and we're going to be talking about um, school and stresses involved with that. So, Michaela, what grade are you in? Um, I'm in grade 10 in the moment, so start of senior school. And has that brought along a lot of pressure recently? Um, yeah, I guess. Like, I mean, the workload has intensified a little bit because, like, I, I had an exam last week, and it's this week, week four, and I I had an assignment due today, and I have a draft due today. I haven't started either of them. So pretty like, busy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, what are your average grades that you usually get? Um, normally, it's like an A, A minus. Sometimes, if I'm under a bit of stress, it's an A minus because, like, I can't perform to my greatest ability and yeah. like, stuff like that. Fair so. enough. So um, at school, what do you think are the main things that um, influence you to get good grades? Um. One of the big things I reckon is your parents because they're like, oh, we want you to do well. You should always try your hardest. hardest." So I always try my hardest and, like, just try to do my best work and everything. And I guess another thing is teachers. They also want you to do your best. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good, like, friend network, they're like, oh, we can help you with this stuff. Like, we can give you advice on your assignment. We can proof you your assignment. And it's like... If you just have a good support network in general, it's like... You think that you can succeed better? Yeah. Yeah. So um, would you say that um, your family and your teachers and your school in general puts you under a lot of stress to perform well? Um, It depends on the scenario. Like, I mean, during exam period and, like, assignment period, it's like, oh, I have way too much stuff to do. I can't do these extracurricular activities that I have to do. I have to stop doing that and I have to manage my time and I have to do this and do that and just like it sometimes it gets a bit overwhelming Mm. and like parents are always like we want you to try your hardest and then if you underperform if you do um, worse than you previously had done they're like oh what happened and you're just like I was under a bit of stress and I was like hmm panicking about stuff and like more like just factors like that yeah so you're talking about panicking what kind of emotions do you um go through when you're feeling particularly overwhelmed and you know that you may not be able to perform as well as you may be um sometimes I just lie on my bed and just kind of like think about it and just it just gets too overwhelming and then I start panicking and then I can't control my panic and it's like oh no all of this has like just escalated really quickly and mm. I probably should have done something better in hindsight to stop it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've all been there. Um, have you encountered, have you actually had a solution for this impasse? Like, have you done anything that's helped? I mean, like, the other day when I was doing my assignment and I didn't know what to do, I just went for a walk because I find that just like being alone and being alone with your own thoughts it's like it's kind of calming to me but maybe not to other people because like it's Mm. like different people have different things and different ways of dealing with things yeah but like just like or like stuff like making a list and like organizing and breaking it down and stuff like that yeah so would you say like what kind of learner are you so do you learn off better off um like writing down things or saying things out loud or just walking in nature, as you said. I probably in the we did a test during school the other day, and it said I was an auditory learner. So the type of learner that the school the school system is designed best for. So the people that like learn by listening to things and like writing stuff down. Mm. Like I find it easiest to memorize something if I write it down a couple times, try and remember it maybe say say it out loud and then write it down again and see if it's right. Mm. So stuff like that. Yeah. So around exam and assessment time, do you think this helps you or where do you think it falls short? Um, I don't know. I kind of like flashcards. Mm. But with me, I, I mean, like, I only have, like, one way of doing things. It might... Because, like, I'm a very strong auditory learner and it, it could be useful to, like learn in different ways like maybe like Mm -hmm. adapting to the situation and just like seeing what you could have done better and like performed better and like the ways that that would have happened so yeah yeah 
Um, just a thing for perhaps younger listeners, how do you think um, transitioning from primary school to um, high school was? Like, how did you, or perhaps junior school to senior school, how did you find um, the transition there? Like, what were the key points? Well, the workload, the first thing, the workload definitely increases, mm-hmm. like, twofold. Like, my brother, he's just transitioned from primary to secondary, mm-hmm. and he's... He's coping with it all right, but I think that's because he's seen what had happened to me and Um, how I had gotten overwhelmed. So I think he's trying to do things as he gets them and manage his time. So it's if you have someone to, like, look on and, like, just use as your role model maybe or maybe learn from their mistakes, I think that makes it a lot easier. And, like, Mm. me as the eldest child, it's, like, I had no one to, like guide me yeah yeah so it would have been helpful to have like I mean my parents are like kind of like guiding me but it would have been helpful to have like an older sibling yeah or an older friend that could have like helped me more in that as an older sibling myself I find that quite relatable um so with your parents um do they help you much with assignments or is it faded away since primary school well my mum used to be a teacher so Uh. she she's good at like proofreading stuff but like with stuff like maths like we're doing we were doing quadratics she doesn't remember how to do that anymore so she can't really help me Mm -hmm. but I mean it's certainly useful in like the English aspect because definitely she can proof me she can proofread my work she can make sure it's like good and it makes sense and it's understandable so that has helped with my assignments and like I mean the emotional support along with it it's like really helpful. So what do you, about, what do you think about um, people who perhaps don't have a teacher as a parent? Um, do you think that it would be t- like a different, an entirely different situation? It wouldn't be entirely different, but I mean, it certainly would be different because like my mom has had experience and she, she can read criterias mm-hmm. and she understands like exactly the way that they are marked in. So it's helpful to have that because she can tell me right, your work is at this standard and you can improve it by doing this. Mm -hmm. So maybe some other parents can't do that because they don't have the experience. But, I mean, it's ultimately it's up to you to, like, look at the criteria and look at your task and just try and improve and do the best you can. Yeah. So what do you think are your um, tips for better learning and less stress at school? Prioritise your time and organise it. Mm. do not procrastinate I tell myself this every time but it just (laughs) doesn't work now that's relatable content yes (laughs) so um prioritizing not procrastinating what about when times of stress like what do you think what are your best tips there as I said just try not to overthink it just look at it simply break the task down just do like all right I'm going to do this. I'm going to write this paragraph by this time. Mm -hmm. And I did that yesterday night as I was trying to finish my TIS assignment in a rush. And it helped me because I had a deadline Mm -hmm. and that deadline was close. And it motivated me to do something because the deadline was approaching and I have to do it by this deadline. So that helps. Where do you work? Where Where do you work best? So where would you like to preferably work? Um, I like to work, like, in a cool space that's, like, I work in my room. It doesn't have, like, air conditioning. So, like, I think, like, the environment that you work in, Mm -hmm. if it's hot, you won't be able to concentrate as well. If it's too cold, you won't be able to concentrate if it's too noisy. So, like, stuff like that. I work best in my room where, like, there's no distractions. Like, there's no TV, there's no phone, there's no food, there's no fridge. (laughs) All the big distractions. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Michaela, for um, talking to me today. It's been really, really good. Um, And I hope that our listeners have gained something. So, thank you. Thank you. Now we have a song by Isabella Gonzalez. It's called It's Okay.
for listening to the podcast for today. Um, and remember, if we said anything wrong or incorrect or something that you didn't agree with, please contact us and we'll try to rectify our mistakes. Um, just keep in mind that we're all human and take mercy on us, please. Yeah. And if you have any music that you'd like to send to us, please feel free to do that. Send it to our site or to our emails and we'll be sure to include it on our show. Mm-hmm. And check the description um, for the songs on this episode um, if you really enjoyed them. Yeah, next episode we'll be looking at body image and how uh, it ties in with mental health. And if you like us, please check out our website, Mental um, or go to our social links, um, at, which are all under Mental Music Pod. Right, thanks for listening. Thank you. Oh.